Hello, welcome back to the VDC space. Today we're going to be modeling a bridge parapet in Revit. Uh, we're going to model two types of uh, bridge parapets and then we're going to use the BIM family template in order for us to generate those two. Now, before I get started, I would like to ask you guys to please subscribe to the channel if you are new. And if you are already subscribed, hit the notification button as I do Revit tutorials and BIM modeling videos three times every week. Uh, as you can see, when you go to my channel, I have different uh, topics. I cover different topics. So when you go to my playlist of uh, different disciplines when it comes to architecture and engineering. Now, without further ado, let's jump into Revit. So here we are in Revit 2023. We're going to use the BIM family template. So before that, just open up a new project, use the construction template. And then just check, uh, uncheck these two uh, buttons and then go to the file new and then go to family and then scroll down and then go to metric structural framing beams and braces open. So here we are in the beam family template. So you're going to remove this extrusion that comes with the template and then this line and then these extra reference planes. So you are only left with the left uh, reference plane and the right reference plane and then i'm gonna reduce the length of this um, by 1000 so i'm gonna make it 2000 millimeters and then go to the left elevation and then we're gonna model our profile for our bridge bearing so we're gonna go to create and then you're gonna go to extrusion and then you're gonna set your reference to reference plane left and say okay and then we're gonna use this as our insertion point. So we're gonna we're gonna start from this point and then take it upwards by 600 millimeters, and then to the right by 200 millimeters, and then we're gonna take it down by another 200 millimeters, and then back to the insertion point. We're gonna take it to the right by 300 millimeters, and then up by 150 millimeters. And then you're going to press escape and then go to start and radius arc. And then you're going to select these two points and then you're going to place it like so. And then you're going to go to fillet arc and then you're going to apply the radius on this point. And then you're going to make it 150 millimeters. And then you're going to do the same thing. Uh, this side, you're going to make it uh, 50 millimeter radius. Perfect. And now we just gonna select this uh, curving line. We're gonna reduce this and then make it 250 millimeter radius. Perfect. So this is what we have. And then you're gonna select your line again. And then from this insertion point, you're gonna take it down by 200 millimeters. And then to the right by 60 millimeters and then take it upwards by another 200. And then you're going to say trim and extend and then you're going to trim and extend this. So we're going to add the fillet on this uh, bottom section. So you're going to select your line again and then take it upwards by 10 millimeters. And then you're going to um, uh, draw a diagonal line towards the bottom. And then do the same thing this side. You're going to take it upwards by 10 millimeters and then drag your diagonal line until you meet this bottom line. So trim and extend again, trim and extend, trim and extend, trim and extend, trim and extend. Now in order for me to make this tutorial as short as I can, I'm not going to apply like major parameters to this. I'm just going to add uh, basic uh, dimensions to this. So I'm going to go to your dimension line and then you're going to add your dimensions like so. I'm going to do the same thing here and then I'm just going to reduce my scale and make it one is to five just to make things more clearly and then I'm going to add my height and then I'm going to add my radiuses perfect now this is what we have so I'm going to select this top and then I'm going to say create parameter and then I'm going to name it top width then I'm going to say OK, and then I'm going to lock it. And then I'm going to go to the bottom, select this dimension, create parameter, and then I'm going to say bottom width. 
then I'm gonna say okay and then I'm gonna now and then I'm gonna lock it and then I'm gonna select this dimension and say create parameter and then I'm gonna say bottom uh, with uh, two I'm just gonna name it two and then I'm gonna say and uh, I'm gonna lock it and then this one I'm gonna make it uh, I'm gonna call it height create parameter and then I'm gonna say height okay and then I'm gonna lock it so for the radius I'm gonna start with this one create parameter I'm gonna say R1 and then I'm gonna lock it and then select this one create parameter I'm gonna name it R2 okay and then lock it and then this one create parameter R3 and then okay and then I'm gonna lock it perfect and then I'm gonna say finish finish so while it's still selected I'm gonna say move and then from this point I'm gonna drag it to our insertion point like so perfect now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, add our path I'm gonna poke a hole on this bridge uh, par uh, parapet in order for us to create uh, a path for our electrical conduits that feed electricity towards our street lights so how we're gonna do that we're gonna use a swept blend uh, so you're gonna before that you're gonna go to elevations and say front elevations actually before that go to floor plans reference level and then select your extrusion and then drag it to the right reference plane and then lock it and then drag it again to the reference uh, left reference plane and then lock it so that when you uh, load it into your project you can control the length of your parapet after all we are using a, a beam family template so right you're gonna go back to your front elevation and then you're gonna say create reference plane you're just gonna randomly place your reference plane like so and then select it and then you're gonna offset it by 300 millimeter from your bottom reference level perfect and now for us in order to create our void for our electrical conduits you're gonna say create and say void forms drop down you're gonna go to the last one void swept blend and then you're gonna say sketch path and then you're gonna say you're gonna set your reference uh, plane to reference plane center front or back okay and then we're gonna use this spline which is very tricky and then from this from this point you're gonna place your spline and then you're gonna uh, select this uh, where uh, this middle reference plane is situated and then you're gonna take it upwards and then select the top of your bridge parapet and then you're gonna say escape and then you're gonna select your spline again and say add control and then you're gonna hover over the bottom as you can see there's a horizontal uh, line that it's highlighted you're gonna select randomly select on it and then as you can see there's this blue circle you're gonna select it and then you're gonna drag it to the right until this spline this i'm sorry about that until this curving line is adjusted towards the middle of uh, of this reference plane so you're gonna select it and then select this blue circle and then you're gonna adjust it like so I think it's perfect like that and then you're gonna say finish edit mode and then after that we're gonna add our profiles remember our swept blend consists of two profiles this one and then this one so we are gonna add profiles to this so select one profile edit profile and then you're gonna go to left elevation open view and then right on this insertion point we're gonna use a circle option and then we're gonna draw a circle of 30 millimeter radius and then you're gonna say escape finish go back to your front elevation go back to modify swap blend and then select a profile to edit profile and then this time you're gonna go to floor plan reference level open view and then right on this insertion point you're gonna use your circle again and then you're gonna draw your circle of 30 milli uh, 30 millimeter uh, radius and then you're gonna say escape press finish and then you're gonna say finish go to your 3d view this is what you have just change the level of detail you will see that there's uh there are holes on your bridge parapet perfect 
Uh, if you change this to wireframe, as you can see, this is your void extr extrusion. So you're gonna change the yeah, you can change this to realistic. So this is what you have. Oh, I forgot about one thing. Select your extrusion and then apply material to this. So I'm gonna make it concrete, uh, precast concrete. So I'm gonna say okay. So this is what we have. And then the next thing you're gonna go back to your front elevation. You're gonna select your extrusion and then you're gonna say mirror pick axis and then pick this mirror reference plane. And as you can see, there's a problem. You can't keep elements joined. So I'm gonna say unjoin them. And in order for us, uh, let me show you something. When you go to your 3D view, uh, because there was a warning, this extrusion, void extrusion that we copied doesn't take precedence on this bridge parapet. So it doesn't poke holes on it. And in order for us to remedy that situation, you're going to go back to your front elevation, select this second extrusion, and then you're going to nudge it. Just press your right arrow on your keyboard uh, only once. And then this time go back to your 3d view and then go to cut up cut geometry select this void extrusion and then select your bridge parapet and as you can see it take it took an effect on your bridge parapet perfect and then you're gonna go back to your floor plan reference level and as you can see these are not centered uh, on this uh, middle reference plane so you're gonna say control select the two of your void extrusions and then you're gonna say move and then from the middle of your extrusions you're gonna drag it towards the middle of this reference plane now they are centered so go back to your 3d view this is what you have so yeah basically we are done with our first parapet so we're gonna load it into our project so you're gonna say load into project and i'm not gonna save this um, and then i'm gonna draw my parapet so i'm gonna make it 2000 millimeters this is what you have and then i'm just gonna say vr on my keyboard and then change the bottom offset by and make it minus 1000 millimeters and then the view depth 1000 minus 1000 millimeters so i can see it so i'm going to select this and then copy it to the other side like this so i'm just gonna copy a multiple of them and then i'm going to select these four and then i'm going to say uh, mirror draw axis and then i'm going to draw from the middle of this parapet and then it's they are copied to the other side and then i'm going to go to your 3d uh, view so i'm just going to select this and say hide category just to hide those levels apply hide and this is what you have now we're going to create our second parapet so in order for us to do that we're going to keep it simple so you're going to select one go to edit family and then they are basically going to be the same in dimensions. The only difference is they're going to differ in terms of our void extrusions for, for our electrical conduits. So I'm, I'm going to go to the front elevation and then I'm going to select one extrusion and then I'm going to remove it, delete it. So I'm going to select this swap blend, edit blend, and then I'm going to say sketch path. And then I'm going to remove this path and then I'm going to select this straight line and then I'm going to draw a straight line like so. And then I'm going to say finish edit and then I'm going to say finish and then go to your 3D view. This is what you have right now. So we are done with our second bridge parapet. So I'm going to load it in and then I'm going to save it, but I'm not going to replace it. So it's going to be, uh, I'm going to just going to name it second parapet. And then it's loaded into your project. So from the middle, when I go to the south elevation, uh, this is what you have. I'm just gonna drag these uh, annotations. So as you can see, this is, this is our middle parapet. So I'm gonna skip one. Uh, actually, I'm gonna select these two, and then I'm gonna skip one, and then select this uh, these two again. And then I'm gonna drop down our family options, and then I'm gonna replace it with our second parapet that we created so if i change this to fine and then change this to wireframe this is what we have so our electrical conduits will flow uh, very efficiently so 
I'm gonna go to our 3D view. This is what we have. So the next thing is, the last thing is we're gonna place our street lights. And then uh, I'm gonna say insert, load family. And then I'm gonna go to street light. For the street light, I will leave the link in the description where I downloaded this uh, street light. It's from a website called Majet Survey 365. Again, Majet Survey 365 that's the website where i downloaded this uh, light post uh, family so i'm gonna load it in and then i'm gonna go to level one uh, actually i'm gonna go to level zero and then go to architecture under components i'm gonna say component and as you can see this is our street light so i'm gonna place it right in the middle of this uh, uh, void extrusion Perfect. So I'm going to go to a 3D view. This is what we have. And then I'm just going to select all these lights and then go to edit type and then reduce the height by, by 5,000. So I'm going to make it 5,000 millimeter apply. Okay. So this is what we have. And then when I go to a south elevation, as you can see, this is what we have. Now the electrical conduits will feed electricity towards these lights and the electrical uh, wires from this lights will flow better when it comes to this extrusion for these uh, bridge parapets. So yeah, I hope you guys uh, learned something today and I hope you can apply this logic towards your project and your journey when it comes to learning Revit or applying uh, these to your roads and earthworks projects. So yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. If I did well, please comment, like, and subscribe. If I didn't do well, still uh, subscribe, but also criticize me on the comments. Uh, remember, BIM is all about people, process, policy, and technology. I'll see you on the next tutorial. Peace.